Meanwhile, the inner sanctum continues to elude me. Like, I thought maybe it would be in the middle here. I don't think it is. Or maybe you know where the inner sanctum is. Maybe I can beat it out of you. Oh, man, he's dead. Maybe you know where the inner sanctum is. Maybe I can beat it out of you. Tell me. Where's the freaking inner sanctum? Doll, oh, dude. Inner sanctum? Um, I have some questions for you, dude. How the F do you get out of here? The front gate. That sounds like an obvious direction, but where is the front gate here? I have no idea. <laughs>Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and this is a part two video following up our initial part one. We're playing the uh, Black Isles Classic uh, Planescape Torment. I almost forgot the title of the game for a second there. Right. When last we saw our intrepid hero here, the Nameless One, um, he was locked in a nightmarish underworld afterlife dungeon inhabited by zombies where they were dissecting all sorts of bodies and he had no recollection of where he was. When last we left off, me specifically though, I was trying to find my way out of this sanctum. We had pretty much killed everyone of consequence. We had looted everything of consequence and I couldn't find the exit. It turns out it's this little closet thingy here. Um, we, we, there was a gate here initially in the first part. And eventually we figured out how to open that gate. You can see it's kind of like hidden by the wall here. There's the open gate. And uh, we kind of walked in here and I said, oh, it doesn't look like there's anything in here. Okay, on to greener pastures. Turns out you have to have your mouse in a particular place to click go down. And lo and behold, ta-da, you exit. Um, if I have one complaint about this game, I will say that it seems to be somewhat finicky with where you click on things. The stairs are the same way. Where when you go to click on the stairs, you have to click, you can't just click on the stairs generally, you have to click on the particular part of the stairs that is, seems to be relevant um, towards going up or down. So yeah, that's a minor complaint about the UI. But we, we did it, we did it, we found our way out. I just picked up a book here, The Tome of Bone and Ash, let's see what this says. This worn letter-bound tome lists diagrams and charts detailing several minor wards and enchantments. There are numerous drawings of skeletons, bones, and the manner by which they may be preserved over time. Um, of particular interest is a section regarding guardians. Apparently the dustmen animate corpses of fallen giants to serve as guardians for the mortuary. To make them even deadlier, armoring them in with enchantments. Okay. Um, the book is much too complex for you to absorb all at once, but it looks as if you could refer to certain sections when the need arises. I tell you what. Um, I would like to read the part on how to destroy the giant undead... Guardians of the Mortuary. I, th I feel like that would be a relevant chapter to maybe peruse through. Maybe before they're standing right in front of us. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm crazy. Um, this looks like a large tome. Tomb. The marble surface gives it a rather elegant look. Ooh, elegant tombs. Some somebody paid for the for the the first class tickets of the afterlife. Um, so we are still stuck in this mortuary now. As I said in the first video, this is a very a uh, cool uh, old RPG game made by Black Isle Studios. Oh god, there's a giant. Okay, do, do we even have the power to face these guys? These guys look very intimidating. Run! Run! Okay, we're gonna try it. My game is saved. Oh, now there's three of them! Now there's three of them, okay. I, I don't know if we're gonna make it. Uh, we're, we're gonna see here. These guys do look tough though. Um, let, let's try fighting them, see how this goes. But as I said in the first video, this game was made by Black Isle Studios, the same developers who brought us Fallout 1 and 2, which are classic um, RPGs in the sort of DOS era. What made Fallout so cool is that it was so morally ambiguous. Oh god, they're gonna kill the skull. Forget this, I don't think we can take these guys. Let's just run away from them. They're doing a crappy job of guarding the exit because they all chased me. Ooh, a hatchet. I will take that. Keep running! Keep running, Morty! Morty is the name of my skull. I did not make that up. His name is actually Morty. I think it's actually spelled Mort. Or we're just going full Morty on him. Look, his, I didn't know a skull could die, but apparently it could. Uh, but what made, what made Fallout so, so cool was the moral ambiguity. And this game is full of that, too. It's also full of uh, opportunities to avoid combat through dialogue and stealth. Which I totally love the idea of that. Um, I said in the first video, I'll just say again... 
It's not that I don't like combat in uh, RPG video games. I mean, I really liked Diablo. Diablo was uh, like definitely, uh, oh, I think they killed the skull. Oh no, and I'm cornered. Okay, this is it. This is it, people. Oh, they're totally gonna kill me. The nameless one totally died. Okay, well, I am an immortal in this game, so let's see what happens. Worse than last time. Oh, I just get to get up. Um, he is totally dead. I don't know how to revive him. Um, so one of the interesting things about this game is because you were an immortal, there are no consequences to dying. You just get up and, and carry on. In fact, I think I have all my inventory still on me. I do. Um, however, I don't want my uh, little compadre there to have died. So let's go ahead and load again. And uh, we'll give that a second shot. Let's try and not get Morty killed here. Um, but it's not that I don't like uh, combat in RPGs, uh, it's just that I feel like that is the default, it's like the de facto go-to. Um, you know, think about the name, RPG, role-playing game. When role-playing games were first invented, it's like, yes, combat was definitely a part of them, but there was also the whole role-playing and all the, like, non-combat things that mattered. I feel like that's something that's kind of gotten lost in modern RPGs, where people sometimes, like, there are quests and stuff, but sometimes they're very linear. And I wouldn't even really consider that uh, an RPG if it was, like, an incredibly linear... Uh, style quest thing, you know, just because you have combat doesn't make it an RPG. So I love, I love that uh, they tried to do something different with this game. I love that they tried to sort of make it more of the R and the P, and not just the G. So yeah, I, I'm perfectly happy to have a role-playing game where it doesn't have to be all uh, combat. Although as I say this, I'm literally fighting my way through a dungeon. You might be looking at this saying like, it looks just like Diablo, man. Trust me, in the last video. We talked our way out of a few conversations. There was even a dialogue option to uh, to to break someone's neck, and we totally took off. We totally took that chance. We broke someone's neck just totally on a whim because they were about to rat us out to security, and nobody rats out the nameless one. See, that guy was gonna rat us out too. It's, you see what happens to snitches? Snitches get stitches, guys. Um, I don't know where I am, by the way. So I'm going. Can we go in here. Can, can right. we go over here? There we go. Um, so, in the last video, I got stuck on the second floor. I have a, I have a, an inkling suspicion. I'm gonna get caught on the third floor here. Let's just check our map. So we're going around the outside. I know there's guardians in here. I definitely don't want to fight those guys. Up to second level, Southeast Memorial Hall. Let's, let's continue sort of walking around the outskirts here and just see what we have to work with. And then maybe we can kind of figure out what we want to do about those guardians in the middle. There must be a way All to right. kind of sneak or talk our way past them. There must be a way. As I said, I just told you, you know, like one of the hallmarks of this game is you don't have to engage in fights all the time. I want to try and use my wits. When I was distributing my character points, I definitely did not put too many points into strength and stuff. So even though if you look at my guy, his class is a fighter. The interesting thing about this game is you always start as a fighter, but later on in the game you can actually change to thief or wizard if you like. Um, which I think is kind of cool actually. It again, you know, it reminds me of like the alignment system in, in this game. So in normal D&D you pick your alignment, like you want to be neutral or chaotic evil or lawful good. And then the idea is you're supposed to kind of behave that way, but like nobody really enforces it all that much. Like you don't have to be. Uh, good or whatever. Oh, we got a key. Maybe we can actually get out of here now. And what is this? A clot charm. Ugh, disgusting. Um, but the way this game operates is that your alignment is not something you can control. It starts you out at neutral, and as you behave, if you do good things, then your alignment turns positive. If you do bad things, it turns negative. Kind of like the karma system in Fallout. And I definitely think that is a, a better way to do um, alignment, as I said in the first video. Um, your class, I guess, is something similar, not not entirely the same. It would be kind of cool if the more sneaking you did, your class slowly shifted into a thief, and like the more spells you cast, you shifted into a wizard. Um, but I think it's a little more uh, simple than that. It's just if you meet a certain uh, tutor in the game, you'll have the option of basically turning into a thief or a wizard. Although somebody should totally make a game where... Your class is not something you get to pick. It is determined by how you behave in the game. Because, I mean, isn't that how it works in real life? Like, if you are a businessman or a, you know, scientist or a lawyer or a YouTuber, whatever, you know, like, 
It's, it's, I mean, I guess some of these things, you do get educations. Like, you get trained to be a doctor or a lawyer. Right. But then at another very real level, it's like, you're only a doctor, though, if you actually do doctory things and you behave as a doctor. I think we got to go over here, actually. Um, and so, in a way, it's sort of like your actions define what you are rather than you picking what you are and then that giving you possibilities for actions. So, it would be kind of right. cool if, uh, if somebody actually developed a game like that. Um, I don't have any capacity to do that myself, but uh, maybe somebody else more clever than I could figure out a way to program it. Now, I have these two keys. I have the Mortuary Sanctum key and the Mortuary key. Can neither of these keys be used for anything? Why did I pick them up? Uh, no way to open it. No way to open it. I don't know. I, I have yet to figure out the purpose of keys. That may sound weird. Okay, here's what we're going to do with Morty. Morty's going to hang out right here, and we are going to go and see what we can do about these bad guys in the middle. Also, I'm going to use some bandages here, because why not? Use, use, use. Okay, I, I seem to have a lot more help now. Was that me using a bandage? Okay. Let's try and fight this guy, like, just mano a mano. I'm hurt. Oh, God. He did 11 points of damage in one hit, and he killed me. Another trip to the mortuary. Morty does not like that. I can stop watching over you and go relieve myself. All right, so we're back, Morty. What did I miss, buddy? What did I miss? Show me the map. Okay, we need to. Where are the stairs again? They're over here. All right. I'm gone. Um, I have no idea how we're gonna beat those guys. Wait, there's stairs that go down here. Huh. Wait, so I could have I could have come here whenever I wanted? I'm so confused. Done. I feel like it's going to take me a while to find my way out of the sanctum here. The mortuary. Hey, who's that? Hello. This she was not here before. Let's see what she has to say. You see a strikingly beautiful uh, a strikingly beautiful ghostly form before you. Her arms are crossed, her eyes are closed. She has long flowing hair, and her gown seems stirred by some ethereal breeze. As you watch, she stirs slightly, and her eyes flicker. Greetings. Her eyes slowly open, and she blinks in confusion for a moment, as if uncertain where she is. She looks around slowly, then sees you. Her tranquil face suddenly twists into a snarl. You, what is it that brings you here? Have you come to see firsthand the misery you have wrought? Perhaps in death, I still hold some shred of use for you. Her voice drops to a hiss. My love. No, oh, I think this is a girl that I wronged. Uh, my love, do I know you? The spirit makes a begging motion with her hands. How can it be that the thieves of the mind continue to steal my name from your memory? Do you not remember me, my love? The ghost stretches her arms. Uh, think! Her voice becomes desperate again. The name Dianara must evoke some memory within you. Uh, no, I'm sorry, my memories are lost to me. Lie. Yes, yes, the name does sound familiar. I think I feel the stirrings of a memory. Tell me more. Perhaps your words shall chase the shadows from my mind. I like this. This seems like a well thought out answer. Like we're going to probe her for a bit more information. This is the one that we're going to go with. Um, oh, at last the fates show mercy. Even death cannot chase me from your mind, my love. Do you not see? Your memories shall return. Tell me how I can help you, and I shall. See, we, we got her to cooperate. Um, okay, do you know who I am? You are one both blessed and cursed, my love, and you are the one who is never far from my thoughts and my heart. Yeah, that's nice, but do I have a name? What's my social security number? I need the, that, that kind of information is more important to me. Blessed and cursed. What, what do you mean? The nature of your curse should be apparent, my love. Look at you. She points at you. Death rejects you. Your memories have abandoned you. You do not pause and wonder why. Uh, I'm still trying to get my bearings. Memories aside, and assuming death has rejected me, why is that a curse? I do not doubt your ability to rise from the dead. I do believe that every incarnation awakens, uh, weakens your thoughts and memories. You claim to have lost your memory. Perhaps it is a side effect of countless deaths. Oh, man. If so, what more will you lose in successive death? If you lose your mind, will you not even know enough to realize you cannot die? You shall truly be doomed. Hmm, how long has this been going on? She seems to have a lot of info on me. Um, and she did love me at one point, so... Um, I do not truly know, except that it's gone on long enough. Your, your answers are vague and, and uh, directionless, uh, Dianara. Uh, I, w I would prefer more direct responses. 
Um, let's see, what else do I want to know? How about, I know where I am. How about who are you? The spirit makes a begging motion with her hands. Oh, I already did this. Wah wah. Um, okay, I need to escape. Enough, enough with the chit chat. Let, let's cut to the chase. How do I get out of here? Leave? Dianara's voice drops to a hiss and rises again. Leave? You ask me? Uh, who am trapped here because of you? How to leave this place? Yes, I need to leave this place. Do you know a way out? <laughs> you come to me in death only to tell me that you need my aid so you can abandon me again. Her face is a mask of fury. I died for you, my love. I suffer for it even now. Ooh. Um, okay, how can we make this up to her? Uh, will you spurn me in my hour of need? Uh, how about this one? I only ask because I'm in danger. Guide me to a place of safety, and I shall return to you. Ah, I like that. In danger? She looks concerned. Of course, my love. I will aid you in any way I can. She closes her eyes for a moment, and you watch an ethereal zephyr pass through her body, stirring her hair. After a moment, the zephyr dies, and her... What is a zephyr? What is a zephyr? Her eyes slowly open. Perhaps there is a way. Yes? Ooh, I gained experience. We did it! See? Like, this was, in theory, like a quest in quotation marks uh in uh in planescape here i sense that this place holds many doors shrouded from uh mortal eyes perhaps you could use one of these portals as a means of escape all right portals i wish i had a portal gun portals are holes in existence leading to destinations in the inner and outer planes if you could find the proper key you could escape through one of them okay key she pauses a moment as if attempting to remember. Portals will reveal themselves when you have the proper key. Unfortunately, these keys can be almost anything. An emotion. What? An emotion? A piece of wood, a dagger of silvered glass, a scrap of cloth, a tune you hum to yourself. Oh my god. The dustmen are the only ones who would know the keys um, you could use to leave their halls, my love. Okay. Well, that's actually good info. Well, thanks. Um, Dinara looks furious. Then leave, you, as you have hundreds of times, uh, hundreds, thrice times before. Do you only come to torment me? Leave and do not return. She closes her eyes with an ethereal whisper. She fades away. Well, that's sad. Um, you, uh, Morty, you back with me, chief? You kind of drifted out on me there. Um, do you know who that spirit was? Eh, spirit? That specter I was talking to, the woman. You were rattling your bone box with some woman? Where? Uh, Morty looked around, excited. What does she look like? Oh, so I guess only I could see her. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, all right. I need to talk to the dust men. So I know one that I can talk to who doesn't want to kill me on sight, and that is uh, Drawl, I think is his name. So let's go up and see what's going on with uh, D-Bags. It's my, it's my nickname for him. We're tight, me and, me and Doll. Doll or Drawl, whatever his name was, I forget. What time is it in the game? 2.04 p.m. We started this game, it was 8 in the morning. We had an early Go start. Um, I want to be in bed by 7, Morty, because I want I really want to get a really early start tomorrow, so we can wrap this adventuring up, you know, uh, soon. We're, we'll, we'll eat dinner at 4, get the early bird special. I feel like I, I'm, I have the schedule of a retired person who goes to bed at 7. Um, all right, so I have some questions for you, doll. Tell me um, about portals. You sound ill. How about I never asked him this. I am close now to the true death. I will not be long before. This is my buddy, by the way. He reads a giant book and tells me things. I will not be long before I pass beyond the eternal boundary. Blah blah blah. The plains hold no more wonders for one such as I. Um, how about, there might be a way I could help you. I do not wish to live forever nor live again, restless one. I could not bear it. Oh, that's sad. Okay, what is this place? How do I get out of here? Can you tell me how to, oh, how did I get here? Okay, how do I get out of here? The front case is the most obvious exit, but they will not let anyone but the dustman pass. One of the guides by the front gate has a key to it. But it's unlikely he will open it for you unless you are extremely persuasive. Okay, so maybe there's multiple ways out of here. There's portals. There's also guides by the front gate. All right. Uh, so we we are on the second floor. So we want to go down to the first floor, obviously. Uh, so let's head back to where we were. 
And we'll go down. These do not look like stairs downwards, by the way. They look like literally a broom closet. Like, those are stairs? These are stairs. This is clearly stairs. What is this? I guess it's, it's apparently stairs. Okay, so our map screen. Um, oh, there's the front gate right there. Oh, wait. Did I kill the guide? I might have killed the guide. Done. Uh-oh. Um, wait. Wait, it, but it, if this is the front gate, hold on. Oh, no, wait, the front gate's over there. Okay. Okay. So we'll go over here. Where, where's my guy? I can't see. <laughs> I wish things would rotate. Where? Where's my sure, dude? Oh, he's over here. I only had Morty selected. Okay, come here. Oh, I think we just exited. I think we had a key all along. Okay. So the whole thing about portals is just bull? What was that? There's a bunch of ghosts worshipping in empty idol place. Alright, we we are in Sigil. This looks like the netherworld from Beetlejuice. Because we're not back in the world of the living yet. We're still in like the afterlife. This is like the, the netherworld or whatever where Beetlejuice is from. Um, I remember as a kid. I loved Beetlejuice as a kid. And uh, I always thought the, the netherworld was so awesome. It always looks so neat. Alright. Uh, now there are dustmen here. Hopefully no one questions the fact that I have the blood of their kinsmen all over me. I did murder a bunch of them <laughs> before I left the temple. Um, you see a pale-faced dustman standing guard over the front gate. He's staring off across the city rooftops with a distant expression. As you approach, he turns to face you. Yes? I have some questions for you. He nods and waits. Um, I'm looking for someone named Farad. Oh yeah, I for totally forgot about Farad. We had a quest to find a dude named Farad. Okay, let's get back to that. Farad is a collector. The man studies you for a moment. If you would wish to know more of him, I am told that the initiate Emoric in the Gathering Dust Bar also seeks him. It may be that he can help you. Where is the Gathering Dust Bar? As one leaves the mortuary, the front gate heads south and west. It lies past the memorial. Hmm. Wasn't it handy that we were here to get all this useful information? It seems extraneous at the time. Um, Alright, we're going to head down to the bar... Oh, hello. A hive dweller. I, I know Morty would like to get to know you. He is uh, very interested in the female gender, let me say. Dustman, stay out of stay out of most of the taverns in the hive, except for the gathering dust. There's hardly anyone but the dead in there. It's hard to read with the O's. What is she, Irish? Um, Alright, true death awaits. Oh yeah, this is a hot happening place. You guys are totally killing the vibe here. Um, is this the bar, by the way? Elderly hive dweller, Quentin. Hey, this this guy has a name. If you were an NPC in a video game, would you just be random villager number two, or would you actually have a name? Think about that. Tells you what tells you how much progress you're making in your life. Are you important enough in this world to be an NPC with a name, or would you just be a ne another random uh, character? I'd probably just be another random character. The man before you looks to be middle of height and years. He's stout with... He's he's exactly in the middle in terms of height and years? What are the odds? He's stout with thick, bullish neck. His shoulders are hunched over as if a great weight is pressing on them. Um, greetings! This is how I say hello to everyone, guys. The man throws you a glance. There's room, Cutter. No need to ask my leave to stand there. Um, I want to know what this monolith was. It's a tombstone for the plains. He scoffs. Graveyards of names are scratched on that rock. Uh, can only hope my name's the one uh, that'll split the stone in twain. He points at the base of the monolith. Quentin, uh, right there, hammered, is just hard enough to send the damn thing crashing down. Tombstone for the plains? Aye, Quentin smiles ruefully. The Dusties scratch the names of the dead on this monument right here. He gestures around uh, him. And on the walls of this place, not enough space by my reckoning, but no matter. They do their best, can barely read half the names. And why are you doing it? Reading it for new arrivals? Oh, man. Uh, trying to find a new one every day. Trying to remember if I knew any of them. Nothing more. Um, so, Dustman record everyone? Hmm, the, dust, the Dusties have more care for the living. The living? Ah, you know, about the Dustman mourners that come to this place. 
They aren't mourning the dead. See, they're the mourning the living. You can barely get a word in edgewise. Man, this guy has a lot of information. Just sort of click through a couple of these. Uh, I think that's it. Thanks. That's you know what that that uh, is stored in my dialogue. I can go read it later. It's like I'm recording every conversation I have with the person. But who is this? Look, this person. Look at her legs. She has like demon goat legs. Um, it's like a minotaur who's and she's missing the back half. Uh, this woman looks. This woman's face looks broken. She's covered in scars. They look like bite marks and fingernail cut. She's cradling the shreds of several rags in her hands and staring emptily at the wall in front of the monument with the names there. Based on this description alone, I'm literally going to turn around and walk away. <laughs> uh, I feel like she was probably an inch away from murdering me for simply uh, asking for her attention. We have thugs. No town is complete without thugs. Um, look at this guy for one second here. Um, doesn't he look totally naked? Oh no, they're attacking me. The thugs are after me. What's happening? Thugs. There are thugs. The guy on the far right, though, when he was standing up straight, he looked totally naked. Why are you guys after me? No, don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. I never wanted to hurt any of you. I'm just going to run away. Are the thugs mugging this person? No, why am I the only one getting mugged? What's this guy doing? He punched a wall. What is happening over here? Davis. Davis. What, what, why are you doing this? Uh, his skin is greenish. Pair of goat horns. What is happening in this town? Uh-oh. These guys are still after me. Well, joke's on you. I choose not to fight. We're not going to give them the satisfaction, guys. If bullies try and pick on you, you just run away. Like Forrest Gump did. All right. Okay, so we've got to find this bar. It was like down here into the west, I think. They said. Um... Are these bullies still chasing me, by the way? I can't even see them. They're lost in the fog of war. Okay, here we go. We're gonna enter here. The bullies will never find us. We found the bar! Sweet! Most Isley Cantina. I want to get into a bar fight and chop someone's uh, arm off with a lightsaber. We got zombies. Zombie workers. This is where a zombie worker comes to blow off some steam. We slaughtered a bunch of you guys in the crypts. Gravestand. Okay, who am I looking for? What was the guy's name? Uh, hold on. I can check this. Uh, journal. Okay, no, we don't want that. How do we check dialogue? There we go. Man, there's a lot of Quentin in here. I'm just scrolling past all this Qu Quentin. Okay, let's see here. Um, who am I looking for again? Uh, Ferret is a collector. Emmerich. See, this is why it's handy to be able to, to look at old uh, dialogue. So we're looking for a dude named Emmerich. Dustman, Dustman. I wish you could. I wish you had a mouse cursor in real life. That you could just hover over people and see what their names were. Bonus points if you could right click and like uh, learn all sorts of uh, information about their statistics, like how fast they can run, how much they can bench, how much education they have, etc., etc. I'm not seeing this dude though. Is this him? Old Copper Eyes. What do you have to say, Old Copper Eyes? Before he was a tall, silent figure, he could easily pass for a statue. I feel like I'm a dungeon master in D&D. Like, I'm doing so much reading of, like, what the NPCs are doing. Um, although the deep furrows in his face and brow make you uh, wonder if the sculptor was a little too eager in defining that face with a chisel. Uh, okay. Greetings! Tell me, Old Copper Zone. Tell me your tale. He stares at you. His eyes are difficult to make out uh, past the black well of the s his eye sockets, but they look to have coppery sheen to them. Well, I know where you got your name. Uh, he says nothing. Okay, Copper Eyes, you gave me nothing to work with there, buddy. That was utterly embarrassing. Seer the Skeptic. Where the hell is this Emery guy? Dustman. Dustman. Greetings. Can I ask you some questions? No, not at this time. Fair enough. I mean, if somebody walked up to me in a bar and said, Hey, can I ask you some questions? I would say no. Um, as you approach the elderly woman, she turns and stares at you. Uh, la, look who's come a calling on seer day. Death's dear son. She looks up and down and, and shakes her head in disbelief. By every power and its mother boy, what crypt did you crawl out of? Let's, let's crack a joke. Well, the crypt was losing its charm, so now I'm looking around for the right place to die. Know of anywhere? 
Um, she barks a laugh that rattles your ears. Ha! Not here unless you want to die of boredom. Uh, what's wrong with here? Um, look around you. Uh, what do your eyes tell you? A dustman bar. Very good. See her chuckles dryly, though she doesn't seem to be laughing at you. At the risk of explaining myself, dustmen are the dullest breed of dollars that ever nested in sigil. Uh, always speaking of death reverently, like it's some holy union that uh, every creature in the multiverse should strive for. Chooch! Man, the dustmen are really bringing this town down. No one seems to like the dustmen. But you're a dustman. A dustman, I suppose. Ch I've been uh, enough sand... I've seen enough sand pass through the hourglass while wearing these robes. This body's almost ready to pay the ferryman, she chuckles, but there's not much mirth in it. You afraid of dying? Of course I am, boy. Who isn't? She frowns and uh, glances around. Except dustmen, they're not afraid because they've been swallowing so much of their own bat droppings over the decades. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, where's this dude that I'm supposed to meet? You know what? I'm not even entirely sure I'm in the right, right. bar. Maybe I'm in the wrong bar. Oh, wait. Initiate. Emmerich. Oh, so he might be one of the dustmen. Okay. Let's try this. Let's let's try our luck with these different dustmen. Uh, greetings! I want to ask you some questions. Nope. Okay. Let's try this guy. Uh, greetings! I just want to cut to the chase. Uh, you look troubled. What's wrong? I'm not even really reading what he's saying. Where's the mausoleum? Oh, wait. What did he say? Uh, Mausoleum awakes the dead, walk, the dead are disturbed, find out what disturbs the undead, and I will pay. I w I'm more interested in meeting Initiate Emmerich, if you know the dude. Um, you see a somber-faced man. Greetings, can I ask you some questions? Farewell. It's like my stand- it's like my- my- my three-line opening. Greetings, can I ask you some questions? Farewell. This guy is awaiting death. Okay, this must be him. Before he was a young dustman with stubble on his chin and dark circles beneath his eyes, he's staring at the wall with a somber expression. If someone ever hovers a mouse cursor over you and a waiting death goes above your head, you know you got problems. Greetings! The dustman does look up. He doesn't look up. He stares straight ahead as if he's seeing something several leagues beyond the walls of the bar. Can I ask you some questions? He doesn't respond. He keeps staring into the distance. Um, alrighty then, Morty hisses. Let's go, Chief. This Dusty might as well be fertilizer. Oh, he does not like Morty. As you turn to leave, the Dustman suddenly speaks, his voice barely a murmur. You have to strain to hear his words. You think he said something about wanting to die. What did you say? What you say? The boy's expression does not flicker. Do you want to die? Um... Ooh, we have some options here. I like this. We could say, we could truthfully say yes or truthfully say no, or we could lie and say yes. Hmm. That's cool. I really don't know, though, and so I kind of feel like this is the perfect option. It's always great when a game has dialogue options. Like, you know, if it just said yes or no, like some simpler RPGs would, would force you. Like, I love that it's truth no, truth yes, or lie yes. Like, you can even lie. Like, there's two yeses. But beyond that, it's like, I honestly don't know. <laughs> Are you threatening me, boy? No, we're not going to get aggressive with him. So I'm just going to say, I don't know, because I legit don't know. I've kind of heard some arguments from the other NPCs that suggest that maybe my character wants to die. Um, he says yes. Okay. Um, why do you want to die? This existence. This existence is a mockery of life. I do not wish to continue the charade any longer. His face wrinkles in disgust. Why would anyone wish to remain in this foul city, in the center of a multiverse that feeds on pain and hatred? Death is silent. Comforting. Hmm. I mean, he makes a point, a good point. Surely the living cannot be that, that bad. That's a bleak outlook. There's a lot more life than pain and hatred. How about then why haven't you killed yourself? We're just, it's, we're totally, this kid means nothing to us. We don't want to get into his bullshit. We just want to, like, get some answers here. Um, I've been looking for a means to end my life. Will you kill me? Um, if you lack the conviction to kill yourself, I'm not going to do it for you. How about it depends? I'm, I'm a mercenary, buddy. He tosses a small bag on the table. In this bag is all that I own. 50 coppers. Kill me and it is yours. Hmm. Hmm. Let's do it. He closes his eyes. <laughs> oh, man. Can't believe we're going to kill him. Are they going to kick us out of the bar for this? Reach your hand around his neck and strangle him. 
Take the money and leave quietly. Keep your money. I want to know why you want to die. That's hilarious. So you could literally just take the money off the table while his eyes are closed. He's waiting for death and walk away. Um, okay, that would just give him more reason to want to kill himself. Let's do the guy a favor. Let's start strangling him. You place your hands on his neck and begin to slowly constrict. He gives choked gas. His eyes open wide. With a pleading expression, he begins to claw at your hands. We can kill him! We can do it! But we're gonna let him go. We're not that horrible. You release him, and to your discomfort, you find yourself doing so reluctantly. Oh, God. Armithy wanted to strangle the crap out of him. Uh, the boy gasps for breath, coughing violently. Changed your mind? The boy nods weakly. Look, next time you want to die, you better be damn sure, because the next fellow may not stop when you ask him to. Now stop moping around life's misery when you obviously still want to be part of it. The boy looks at you for a moment in silence, then he nods slowly, rubbing his next. I could keep the money? Oh man, that would be pretty mean. I'm keeping this. Let's let's get in the I don't care about money. I'm not gonna be playing this game long enough to need the money. Whatever, kid, you got off easy this time. The boy nods again and finally catches his breath. V very well. Thank you, sir, for giving me a fresh perspective. I like sawed him. Like you know in the movie Saw, Jigsaw basically meets puts people in life and death scenarios so that like if they survive they're gonna value life. Uh, that's basically what I did to him. They do it in Fight Club too, with uh, Raymond Raymond Kessel or something. They like uh, pull that guy out of the convenience store, put a gun to his head, say they're gonna kill him if he doesn't go back to school, and then like. Uh, Jack is like, why would you do that to Tyler Durden? And Tyler's like, yo, he thought he was going to die. Tomorrow will be the best day of his life. Um, anyway, uh, don't thank me, just live. It insults the dead when you treat life carelessly. I feel stronger. Ooh, I leveled up. That leveled me up. I like that. Again, I like that these like little choose-your-own-adventures um, matter. Okay, we have leveled up. Oh my god, we're level three? He must have leveled up before and I didn't even notice. Okay, so what can we do here? Mm, one characteristic point gain. Saving throws have been improved. Okay. So these do nothing. Um, ooh, thief skills. Stealth, detect traps. I like pickpocketing. I do like stealing from people. Oh, but I can't, I can't modify those. In Fallout, I always used to pickpocket people. It's hilarious. It's funny when you would, like, sell something to a, a vendor, like a store, and then just pickpocket it back, and sell it to him again, and... <laughs> I mean, what... I, actually, I think cut out the middleman. I think I would just pickpocket him and take his money. Um, oh, do we get to... Oh, sweet, we have more points. Oh, we only have one point? Oh, this is a big decision, then. Uh, we're wise enough, we're strong enough. Can't reduce these. I guess let's become more charming. The, the longer that this this rotting husk of a corpse is alive, interacting with the world, the experience it's gaining is making it slightly more charming. He's, uh, the devil's in the details, people. Okay. Um, we level up again? No. Information? Uh, strongest creature killed zombie worker. Not very strong. Not very impressive. Okay. Um, I guess that's it, really. Thaco. Do you guys know what Thaco stands for? T H A C zero. Actually, it's not an O. That's two hit armor class zero. The way D and D worked is when your character was attacking something else, other things had armor classes, and zero is like a nice sort of common armor class. Armor classes can go all the way up to like twenty or higher. They can go all the way down to the negatives. But in order to hit an armor class of zero, you'd have to roll seventeen or higher. If an enemy had an armor class of one, you'd have to roll sixteen or higher. 5, 12 or higher. You can sort of see the logic there. So very low armor classes like negative 1 or negative 5 or negative 10 were really good. Uh, anyway, that really that has no bearing really on our gameplay. Where Where is this Emmerich dude? Uh, somber and pale-faced Emmerich. Or Dustman. Okay, we're still looking for Emmerich. All right, forget about, uh, forget about finding Farad for now. Let's give this other quest a try. Uh, this actually sounds super interesting. Okay, so there's a mausoleum where the dead are walking. In order to get there, we have to go um, north and west of the Dustman Memorial. I know where that is. That's where I met Quentin. I should go to the archway and make a semicircle over my heart with my right index finger. Then an entrance would open. Wow. Okay. 
Um, I can find the problem in the mausoleum and solve it. Let's give it a try. Um, how do I exit the bar? Here, there, there's the exit. Okay. So we have to go up here. Oh, there's... Damn it! No! Should we fight these guys? I don't know if we should fight these guys or not. Um, pox. What is this? Is there someone we can go in here? Oh god, they, they it's like a gang of ruffians who just want trouble. It's West Side Story, man. Alright, let's freaking do it. Come on, you want some of me? Damn it. I will kill you. I'm, I'm taking hard. damage. Oh god, run away. Run away, Marty. One of the thugs is running away, too. This guy does not look like he was wearing pants. The guy who's directly above me right now. Oh, we killed one. And I died, too. Um, but I respawn, because I am the nameless one. I am he who shall not be named. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go out here. And we're just going to go back. Boy, are they going to be surprised when I show back up. How do we get out of here? It's over here. So I guess this is like the main hub town of uh, of the world because whenever you die, you I'm just gone. sort of spawn All there. Right. He's like, "Hey, didn't I just right. kill you? Oh God, you're back and you're full health. Why would I ever? Why would you pick a fight with an immortal being? You know you're gonna lose eventually. The immortal being is it's just a matter of time before it gets you. Let's kill this guy. Get him. No wait, I want Morty to get him. Get him, Damn. Morty." Kill him. I'm sad that we killed the, the naked thug because it was kind of funny to see him. All right. All right, let's see what they had on them. A freaking bronze ring. Yay. I'm gone. Okay. Um, so. All right. Dustman. I don't, I have no quarrel with you, Dustman. Do not attack. I want to peacefully coexist with you. I, I, I thought that earlier in the story it said that corpses aren't supposed to wander out of the mortuary, so none of these dustmen seem too concerned that I am doing just that. Or maybe I'm like the one exception, because I have done it so often, so many times. Where did that other guy go, by the way? He's like just totally gone. Okay, this looks like the mausoleum. Or it's uh, some chick's house. I think this spell goes something like this. Is she a wizardress? Literally, she's not even wearing a dress. She's wearing a scarf that she sort of wrapped around herself. That is... I've seen scantily clad uh, characters in my day, but that is scantily clad. Blast. I almost had it that time. Don't you know it's dangerous to interrupt spellcasters when they are evoking a spell? Luckily for you, I was only practicing. Well, what is it you want? My apologies for disturbing you. Oh, that's it? You know, if a random undead dude barges into your house unannounced and you're clearly in your pajamas um you might want to be a little more upset at him slash i don't know but her reaction did not seem um reasonable enough now here here we go here we have a portal this is awesome let's do it this is the mausoleum that we we heard tale of the guardian spirit tell me oh spirit why forth have I came? This spectral figure materializes from the gloom of the passageway ahead and quickly moves to block your path. It flows before you, its once human features twisted into mask of rage. Defilers, leave this place at once. You know what my response is going to be, guys? Greetings! Leave now! Its booming voice echoes the hallways. This place is forbidden to the living! Leave while you still can! I have some questions for you. Seek your answers elsewhere. This place is a sanctuary for the dead. I shall not permit the slumber to be disturbed by the intrusion of yet another insolent mortal. I go where I please. Stand aside, spirit. How about, has someone else been here? Uh, if you must know, there's been another intruder, blah, blah, blah. The souls of my brothers and sisters cry for peace. Who is this other intruder? He's an evil coward who wields great power over the dead. He seeks... Uh, something within these halls. What it might be or what its purpose is, I cannot say. Why don't you drive him away? I can't. 
The coward has sealed himself within the inner chamber of the mausoleum. He's erected powerful wards that bar my entrance to the chamber. It is from there that he calls upon the dark arts to awaken my brethren, brethren and bend them to his evil will. So perhaps I can help you out with this little problem. Um, sounds like me like you need the help of one intruder to get rid of another. How about that? Uh, the spirit remains silent for several long minutes. You can almost feel the weight of his lifeless gaze upon you. Yes, you might prevail where I have failed. If you will pledge uh, to rid me of this black guard, I'll grant you passage. Um, sure, let's do it. So be it! The spirit slowly begins to fade until only the echoing disembodied voice remains. But take heed, tread lightly in these halls, lest you join the others in eternal rest. Okay, that's cool. So we're on the, we're fighting for ghosts. We're like the Ghostbusters, but we got hired by ghosts to fight ghosts. Ghost on ghost. Interesting. We're in like some kind of weird sewer. What? What? Wait. Something hit me there. What was that? Um. Skeleton worker. Are these guys gonna fight me or? Yeah, they are. All right. Well, I've. Oh man. What was that? I like hit him with uh, a huge swath of blue energies. Damn it. Why can't we kill any of these guys? Okay, there we go. Get your shit together, team. Oh my god. My, my team is doing horrible. We can't kill three skeletons. We killed hundreds of these guys before. Hundreds of these guys. I'm not running. Forget it, man. Part of being an immortal is you don't run from fights. You don't run from fights. Although you, you lose memories. I do like the the whole sort of idea that uh, when you come back from the dead, you uh, lose memories, you lose a piece of you. Actually, so in... Uh, I talk about Game of Thrones a lot. But in Game of Thrones, George R. R. Martin has said that, uh, you know, he doesn't mind when characters are brought back from the dead, but what he dislikes is the normal comic book treatment where a character dies and then they're resurrected and there's sort of like absolutely no consequences to them being resurrected. But like when you think about it, like death would be a super traumatic thing to have happen to you. Um, and when you're revived, maybe everything that was you wouldn't come back too. So in George R. R. Martin's world, when characters come back from the dead, there's less and less of them and they remember less and less, which I think is actually kind of cool. There's like consequences to death and they can still remember dying. So it's still horrifying and they're still sort of scarred uh, mentally. Let's, let's go back and finish those damn skeletons off. So I like the idea that, um, you know, because I'm not a fan of liking comic books when they just resurrect dead characters because it makes death have no consequences. But I understand sometimes you want to sort of bring a character back for dramatic effect or because of a plot or something. But I like the idea of when characters come back, they're not quite themselves. I think that's one thing the show didn't get quite right about Jon Snow. They brought him back from the dead, but literally his personality and memories didn't change in the slightest. I mean, maybe he got slightly more mature, but he was on that route anyway just because he was getting older, so... Uh, but Beric Dondarrion said earlier that every time he's brought back, there's a bit less of him. Um, and he remembers less and stuff. So it's like, I, I like that idea. So, hey, maybe every time my guy's brought back, he remembers a bit less. Like he remembered, like he can't remember how to make his favorite batch of like chocolate chip cookies anymore. Like his family's recipe is gone. You know, other and, and other important memories uh, to his personality fade with time too. Something like that. Um, all right. So, so far this mausoleum looks like one giant large tunnel. Done. And there's a lot of, there were a lot of skeletons in it. I should have gone down those two hallways at the very beginning. Alright. There's a skeleton doing something. He's flailing around violently, having a bit of a dance party. Can we attack these dudes? Do you want to get in on this uh, skull boy there? Or do you want to let me take all the, the beats? Oh, here comes another skeleton. If we could actually kill one dude, it would be helpful. Oh, God, we're going to die again, aren't we? Hey, the skeleton is leveling up? The skeleton. The, the skeleton head is leveling up? I didn't know that he could do that. Okay, we got another one. I'm hurt. We're not. No retreating. If we die again... Damn it, we gotta retreat, don't we? I don't wanna have to like come all the way back there. There we go. Come on! Kill him! Kill him! Stop missing! You idiots! A key to killing your enemies is hitting them. There we go. Okay, this guy leveled up? 
Uh, how do we? How do we? Uh, statistics. There we go. <laughs> I love his character icon. It's just like a crazy skull with eyeballs. Well, he's stronger than me. He has low wisdom, but he has a lot of constitution. Is like, uh, like your your endurance. Also, there's a PlayStation icon. Represents good. What was it? Represents disposition toward good or evil. So he's chaotic good. Chaotic good characters aren't concerned with structure or order. They're individuals who tend towards performing acts of kindness. Oh, what alignment is my guy? Ooh, here we go. I am true neutral. Believing in maintaining the balance of law and chaos, they don't tip the scales between the two and tend to oppose anyone who does. Okay, that's cool. So there's my alignment, like I was telling you guys. Um, man, he's a much better armor class. I need, I need armor is what I need. I should have looked around town to see if there was like a smith or something. Um, okay. Imagine my skull could get uh, pickpocketing skills. That would be a badass skull. Is that it? Nothing, nothing else to do? Okay. Alrighty. Well, let's carry on here. I have a feeling we're going to start wrapping this up pretty soon. So we may not even get to the end of the Colosseum here, the Massaleum or whatever it is. Oh, I've, I've seen these guys before. I'm not going to survive that. So I guess clearly my guy needs... Oh, we're like trapped in a maze here, just running from that guard. Clearly my guy needs to find himself some armor and weapons. Oh, what the frick? What, what was that? A random purple fireball shot out of the wall and just killed me. Um... Okay. Well, I mean, I think that's the that's a, uh, a pretty a not so subtle hint that maybe my playthrough here is is uh, over, um, or at least is over for this series. Uh, maybe I I, I am kind of tempted to play this game a little bit more, kind of on my own time. But uh, Planescape Torment here. Okay, this is a game that is in the book. A thousand one video games you must play before you die. Let me just say that I love the concept behind this game. I love I, I, I love the, the fact that there's so much um, choose your own adventure dialogue. You can earn experience right. just through performing Done. actions. Um, for a I game thought. actually that I read sort of downplayed uh, combat, there's actually more combat than I would have thought. But that's fine. I mean, I, I do like that there is combat in the game. I think my guy just needs, he clearly needs like armor and stuff. Like, I, haven't, I should explore most of this town before I do anything else, because I need to figure out... Well, that's weird. He was just sort of sliding over there. I need to figure out, like, is there anywhere that I can buy armor or something? Because, like, my guy, he's he's terribly poorly equipped at combat. Um, but overall, I really... I, I like this game. I like the themes of this game. I, I like the idea that you're in the afterlife. You're sort of like in the Beetlejuice netherworld, and you're sort of trying to, to find your way back to life, and you can't remember who you are. And there's things talking about, you know, like, is it better to be dead or alive? You know, there's, like, hints of, like, true detective. And it is this mix of sort of, like, Fallout. Right. Um, it is a Dungeons and Dragons universe, but again, there's no elves, there's no dragons, there's no dwarves. It's not sort of like a stereotypical D&D &D game. It's sort of in this afterlifey um, area, uh, which is pretty cool. What is this guy? Agnar. The man looks haunted. His eyes are half-libbed. Uh, as if he has trouble sleeping, and his hair is long and unkempt. His beard is flecked with bits of dead skin. Ew. Greetings. The man glances up. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're getting pulled into a conversation here. Sorry. Farewell, buddy. Didn't mean to disturb you. Um, ye'd best never cross me door again, ye wretched skin bastard. Let's kill him. All right, Agnar, you talked your way into an early grave, buddy. And his, like, his grandmother is coming to fight, too. The wife of Angnyar. <laughs> How do you say that name? Angnyar. Ah, we killed him. Uh, the universe... Well, we are a true neutral character, so we don't want to do too much good and too much evil. So it's good to always do... You gotta you gotta wash the good out of your out of your life at the end of the day, guys, by doing a little bit of evil. So that's what we did there. Anyways, we uh, peel their faces off and assume the identities of Agnar and his wife and slip into their lives seamlessly, taking over... Um, their identities. Um, I will leave you guys saying that I definitely think this is a game that is worth playing. I don't. I wouldn't say, use the words must 
simply because I think that uh, for people who uh, are not into sort of dialogue heavy games, um, you're going to want to probably skip this one. But I actually uh, really like the concepts that uh, this game espouses and the setting and everything like that. So I think that this is a game that I wish I had played as a kid. Um, and so I can wholeheartedly recommend it for anyone right. looking for an RPG that sort of challenges the status quo. But those are my thoughts, guys. What do you think of... Um, I'm gone. How do we get out of here, by the way? Is there a way out? Um, what do you think of Planescape Torment? Here is it a game that you have some fond memories of? If you do, I would love to hear them in the comments down below. Uh, and is it a game that you would recommend to your friends? Or is it a game that sort of you, looks like something that you want, uh, no, want no part of? Um, no matter what your opinion is, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, whether you've enjoyed the game or not, hopefully you've enjoyed checking it out with me. If you have, go ahead and... Uh, yeah. Oh, this is the guy! Look! Look, literally, it looks like he's not wearing pants. What does that look like? What does this look like right here? Completely inappropriate, right? Like, uh, yeah. And look, he's even given the, like, he, he's, like, doing the pistols with his hands. Like, boo, 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 boo. He's not doing it anymore. As soon as I started talking about it, he stopped. But uh, anyway, this, this guy, he disgusts me. Put on some pants, buddy. He's wearing knee-high boots, a belt, and arm things. His chest is revealed. This is revealed. It's just disgusting. <laughs> inappropriate no society does not say that that is okay buddy completely inappropriate anyway until next time my friends if you find yourself in the afterlife have fun with it just go with it because you never know what kind of zany characters you're going to meet and until next time people peace Done. i feel like the thugs are no longer interested in fighting me they had that one fight they saw what happened and they were like, actually, we decided we don't want to fight with you. If it's cool with you, we will just never bother you again. Can even go talk to this guy. Where's the put on some goddamn pants option? Because I do not like what is just hanging out there. You see a heavy set looking man, he has stone faced expression. Greetings. The man looks at you for a moment, grunts, then raises his hand, revealing a wicked dagger. Oh, I bet it's a dagger. He smiles evilly and begins twirling it menacingly. Uh, farewell. Oh, he wants to fight. All right, dude. We're going to do something your parents should have done a long time ago. Beat you to death. Next time, put on some pants in my town, you animal.